So a few days ago, I received an invite from the Battlefield team and EA to take part in their early capture event for the Battlefield 2042 beta. Today, we're going to be covering that experience as well as everything you should know about the 2042 beta. A big thanks to EA for the chance to get some early hands-on footage to share with you guys. And it still honestly feels surreal that this year we have a Call of Duty, a Battlefield, and a Halo. It takes me back to my high school days, and I'm incredibly excited here for it. But first and foremost, for those of you guys who've been around the channel a while, you'll know this is a deviation from what we normally do. And for that, I hope that's okay. I hope you're cool with it. If you enjoy this and would like to see more Battlefield 2042 content here on the channel, do me a favor, drop a like down below, comment what you'd like to see, and what you're excited for with the Battlefield 2042 beta and the year beyond. And perhaps share this video off. And of course, if you are new to the channel, well, firstly, welcome. Maybe considering that subscribe button as well to stay up to date with more Battlefield 2042. That said, let's jump right in and talk about the beta. First and foremost, the timing of the beta. Well, thankfully, as the embargo lifts here for these, you're seeing the videos in your sub boxes and you're recommended, you'll see that the early access portion of the beta is in fact open right now. So if you've pre-ordered and have a beta code, you can end up jumping into the game right now as of watching this video. That's one of the nice things here with this is that as opposed to other early access stuff we've done in the past here on the channel, there's no real wait period. You can jump right in if you have a pre-order or a code. And actually, if you don't and you're on PC, on screen throughout this video will be a couple of PC origin codes that you can redeem and jump in if you guys want to. That said, if you don't have a code, you didn't pre-order the game though, you can take part in the truly open beta as of this weekend, starting on the 8th, while the beta is currently slated to last until the 9th. So you'll have Friday and Saturday to play. But let's talk about the content on hand here for the Battlefield 2042 beta. Firstly, there's one lone map with this, the map of Orbital. This is the map that ends up having that focal point on the rocket, which can occasionally launch. It's a Battlefield map for sure, for those that have been around the channel here and are more so familiar with Call of Duty scale, it's much larger by comparison. Aside from your two main HQs, you'll see six sort of regions separated into a few more smaller conquest zones up for contestion. You'll see your standard A1, B1, C1 and C2, D1 and D2, E1 and F1, with points of interest following that, including the radar station, assembly building, cryogenic plant, crawler way, launch platform, and finally the security checkpoint. Each point of interest is connected by various ways to traverse the land, from either natural hillsides to paved roads and tunnels boring through those hillsides. If you want some high action firefights here, honestly, the tunnel points connecting D1 and D2, those are used to avoid that lack of cover up above on the tarmacs. Those prove to be insanely hot zones. You push as a squad, and you might be able to take one of those points that your team may not have, but also you can absolutely wait for people to come through and it's a small final choke point, easy to cut people off, makes for some great action. Now it wouldn't be Battlefield if the world wasn't immersive and destructible. Destruction can be seen on nearly every level you can think of, alterations from things like just your explosives to vehicles like jets, helicopters, and tanks. You got it all like usual. But the key focal points here or highlights of this map orbital are actually two things that we encountered. Number one, that rocket launch and the possible destruction of it, and two, a tornado that can rip through the map. Now, the rockets seem to be on a timer, but it doesn't seem to happen every match. But on the other side of the scale, it's also not incredibly rare. You'll come across it every couple of games or so here, maybe, but you'll be warned by the sirens and the locking arms or mounts giving way mid-map that the rocket will be launching, and then from there, you can either sit back and watch this thing go up into orbit, hence the map name, or if you don't want to and you want a little more chaos, you can shoot it down with enough collective damage, to which that rocket will then explode and litters the surrounding area with debris from the resulting explosion. It's pretty cool in my opinion. Now, the tornado is another environmental hazard that you have to keep your eye on as it, again, can randomly come in as it starts as a water spout over some of that water. Now, as this comes in on a random trajectory, it seems, the closer you end up getting, the, of course, more danger you put yourself in. But it first scrambles your HUD and electronics, but then even closer you end up getting, you get swept up by it. Now, the exact center does damage, becoming lethal over time. So if you can end up controlling yourself, it, of course, is best to stick to the outside of that tornado once swept up, in which case you can actually continue to circle the tornado and you can use it to launch yourself across the map like we've seen in a handful of different trailer tidbits. It's honestly great fun, makes for some really good laughs and also can help you get across the map relatively fast. Now, that's the map of Orbital. The one lone mode that we have here at the beta is Conquest. This, of course, is a staple in Battlefield. No brainer, it's returning here. For those that are, again, perhaps new to Battlefield from my established Call of Duty community, your goal is to deplete the enemy tickets or the number of reinforcements you can end up having left in the game. So the first team to reach zero loses. 
capture those zones, pin down your enemies, and deplete their lives and tickets, and that's how you end up winning the game. It's all-out warfare, so it's 128 players here within this map of Orbital and on that mode of conquest, so a lot of action to be had. Now, in that full game, we, of course, will see much more maps, including Hourglass, Discarded, Manifest, Kaleidoscope, Breakaway, and Renewal, along with a handful of classic maps returning from previous Battlefield titles as well. But let's jump on over to the weaponry. What's in your arsenal here for Battlefield 2042? Now, a fair warning, I don't know that I feel confident in saying these are all of the weapons here within the Battlefield 2042 beta, because during our few hours of playtime, myself and my entire squad I was running with only made it to like level 8 or level 9. So it's possible there are a few more unlocks here, but during our time, we end up seeing the SMGs of the PBX 45 and the K30, the rifles of the M5A3 and the AK24, M5A3 being a very easy weapon to pick up and use. Might touch on that more here in a second. The LMG of the LCMG, the marksman rifle of the DM7, the sniper of the SWS10, and the secondaries of the G57 pistol and the Magnum. You also had throwables and gadgets available here in terms of that class you can build, in which you had the throwable of a frag grenade or proximity sensor, and gadgets of the medic crate, ammo crate, C5 explosive, recoil SM5, FXM33 missile, repair tool, and the IBA armor plate get two of those. You also have the ability to end up getting the pre-made loadout packages, which were the assault package, medic package, engineer package, and the sniper package as well. Those coming pre-equipped with some of these weaponry and some of the attachments and also some of then the throwables and the gadgets. But really when you rank up though, you can utilize more of your own specific attachments, however you'd like to kit it out. Not so in-depth, but giving you a relative idea. The K30 was relatively that vector, and that was one of my favorite ones to play around with here in that SMG category. The M5A3, again, incredibly easy to pick up and use. The AK-24 had a bit more kick than the M5, but still, again, a very viable weapon. Didn't play around too much with the LMG or the Marksman Rifle, but sniping was incredibly satisfying, as it always is within Battlefield. Had a lot of fun with this here, headshots being the more lethal, of course, so make sure you're aiming high. But I highly recommend you check out all these weapons, because it is a lot of fun to play around with each of these. Now, when it comes to attachments, that's where they're really focused on in-game here, that plus system, as it's described this year. The attachment system you can change on on the fly. Now, to do this, when I was playing on mouse and keyboard, all you had to do is press T, and it would kind of inspect your weapon, but also bring up that new HUD, that new overlay that allowed you to choose from different attachments, and it showed you the pros, the cons, gave you a little bit of information about that attachment, and you could select it to equip right then and there, and it would then automatically apply to your weapon. You didn't have to wait until you died to respawn or redeploy. You could have it just right then and there, and that was something that on the fly is phenomenal. It was great to be able to adjust your loadout accordingly, and truth be told, I kind of like that UI that they ended up bringing up with it. Playing into that near future setting, it felt a little bit futuristic here at that, and that's pretty cool to me. Now, handling your weapons are, of course, going to be your operators, these sort of specialists here that you end up having within Battlefield 2042. In the beta, we have four of those available. We end up having McKay, Falk, Boris and Casper. McKay's probably going to be the specialist that you'll see if you're a running gunner, if you're somebody that likes to get into the action here at this. He ends up having a grapple hook he can use and the ability of nimble, which allows players that choose him to move a little quicker while aiming down sights and further enhances their speed-related advantages as well. During the early beta playtest, I was relatively a McKay main, but I also was using Falk almost as a main as well, in which Falk ends up having a Soret pistol and a combat surgeon ability. Now, the Soret pistol has, I think, 12 charges here with this in which you can end up healing your team by shooting them with it or you can self-heal yourself kind of like the stim shot would give you a quicker health regeneration it absolutely comes in handy in a lot of gunfights here but having that high ground the grapple hook can afford it's really up in the air here, I think, in terms of my two favorites with it. Boris, though, another operator, he ends up having the sentry gun and the sentry operator ability. Now, the sentry gun, of course, automatically spots and takes out enemies, but the sentry operator ability spots the enemy targets when the sentry gun locks onto them and gives you a little bit of a heads up as well. Certainly useful, again, but I think that I prefer the first two over that. And then finally, we end up having Casper, who is your stealth play. He ends up having a recon drone and a movement sensor that allows players to know when enemies are approaching. So a little bit of those hero elements here, but not too terribly over the top or intrusive in the overall gameplay experience. I am very curious to see how the other operators within the full Battlefield 2042 experience end up working out, but for right now, that's what's available in the beta. And truth be told, that's basically everything here in terms of the play styles and what you can expect jumping into the beta itself. Now, a few general notes here before we wrap everything up. I want to firstly talk about some inputs here with PC versus controller. Console, I would imagine, is 
just fine. I played my early capture session here on PC, but if you play PC with a controller, the responsiveness admittedly felt a little delayed by about maybe half a second max, but on mouse and keyboard, that was where it was golden. So the responsiveness, of course, definitely favoring mouse and keys if you are on PC, though it is still possible to play with a controller. Again, for those on console, wouldn't expect this to be too much of an issue. Just know that you might have some input delay if you are on PC and want to use a controller. Now, bullet lead, this is for my COD friends out there. Bullet lead is a must. That's naturally something you should take into account here and all Battlefield players will tell you here. So just remember for COD guys jumping over for the first time in a while or maybe first time ever, bullet lead, bullet travel time, very much so something you have to take into consideration with every gunfight. And finally, well, it's a beta. So have fun with it. It's not going to be the full offering, not even close to it, but it's used to test these systems out, used to test the gameplay, weaponry, environmental systems, all that kind of stuff out. So give feedback where applicable, voice any concerns you have in a constructive way. Don't just be demeaning and jump on in and try out Battlefield 2042 here before the launch of the game. So that said, that is where we're going to wrap it up. Again, a big thank you to EA as as well as the Battlefield team here for allowing me some early capture time here with the beta. I'm looking forward to jumping into the full thing here with this as it goes live now and into the weekend, and of course the full launch later this fall. If you guys are interested in seeing more Battlefield 2042 content, again, drop a like down below, show me some love here with this, and show me you'd want to see more. I'd be happy to cover multiple games here on the channel, but hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with everything we have here on the channel. And of course, if you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to chat with me outside of YouTube. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys later and I'll see you on the battlefield. Take care and peace.